Hey everybody, in this video I want to go over how I got the new uh, DeepSeek R1 model built into my website so that it can run fully in the browser, local and private, and basically none of the chat requests will be going to any server or anything like that once you do a few steps that I'll kind of go over and I'll show how I set it up and everything. Um, if you're not familiar with this DeepSeek model, it's another LLM, kind of like ChatGPT, a large language model, and it's kind of been... Uh, quite popular over the last week or two in the news because it's uh, comparable to ChatGPT, at least comparable to the early versions. If you remember, I've been doing some videos for at least a year now where I talk about ChatGPT and it's at least comparable to the original version from a year ago. So it's cool that now it's open source and it's something small enough where you can get it running in the browser. Um, and yeah, with that, I want to start getting into talking about how I did it. So let's just kind of jump into it here. and. First, I'm going to demo DeepSeek itself. You can check out DeepSeek. It's just chat.deepseek.com. And you can say, hey, how is it going? And you have to make sure to check this R1 piece if you want to talk to the new R1. Otherwise, I think you talk to like the V3 type model. And you'll see here, so when you do a request and you send, it's actually sending to a server, presumably in China, uh, my message, and then getting a response back on computers that are running in China. And I get the text streaming to me. And as you can see here, something that I thought was cool, I've seen ChatGPT start doing this now, is this like thinking process, where essentially this section here is almost like it thinking in its head based uh, about what you asked. And one cool thing is, I don't have this part of the feature yet, but where it says like eight seconds of thought for, I have this piece here where you can shrink the thought and it shows it and everything, and I'll show that, but I haven't yet done the timer to know like how long it took. Uh, and then it shows the message here. So you see here, I put, hey, how's it going? And I'll copy this for later testing on, on mine as well, although it's a simple message to type. And it said, uh, great to hear from you. As an AI, I don't have feelings. Yeah, kind of, a, it's a nice enough response, you know, it's ChatGPT style. And you can see here the thinking, it's like, okay, the user greeted me with, hey, how's it going? I need to respond appropriately. First, I should acknowledge, you know, yada, yada, yada. As you can see here, this is kind of a cool chain of thought, or at least uh, it's thinking abilities in some way. Whether it's fake or not, I'm not 100% sure. I've seen so many AIs just kind of like make stuff up and say things all the time that uh, sometimes I don't know. It's like, is that really what you were thinking? Or you just like made a story after you had the answer? But what we'll see here is whatever it is, it's useful. And it seems to be connected to the result it looks like. So it's pretty cool. Um, and you can do follow-up questions like, Oh, that is cool. Where are you? Let's see if it says I'm in China. Uh, this will be the last demo for DeepSeek, and then we'll kind of get into how to run it locally. And you can see here, it's not particularly fast. Like, the one I'm going to be running locally, I have a pretty old graphics card. Like, you could buy it for 100 bucks. It's four years old. It does have 8 gigabytes of RAM, and that's going to be something we're going to mention is important. As you can see here, I got the task manager to show. Um, but it can run faster than this is running right now. Like DeepSeek is taking forever to respond. Even eight seconds for just, hey, how's it going? Seems pretty long. But this one's pretty crazy. Let's just even let that wait and kind of get into the how I did it kind of stuff. And for the first piece of that, we can get to this thing called Web LLM. I've made a few videos about it before, but it's basically a library that you can add to your website to uh, work with Web GPU, which is a technology that allows the browser to use your graphics card fully to run whatever, you know, be it games or now inference with LLMs. Uh, and you can see here they have their own little chat demo. You can do chat with Web LLM and you can try their demo, um, but we won't do that right now. Here's their open source repo for it. And I've uh, contributed a little bit to this and added comments and it's been evolving quite well, which has been pretty cool. And you can kind of see here how to use it and look at the demos. It also, I believe they have a Python library as well you can use. Uh, but what got me interested too, after seeing all this DeepSeek news is that I also saw there was um, a commit two weeks ago where they added a lot of DeepSeek models. And we're gonna get into these specific models that I'm gonna be running because I think like the full DeepSeek model, I don't know if it's like 160 billion parameters or like 600 billion parameters, something like that. But I think it's over 600 actually. And you'd need over 512 gigabytes of RAM to run this thing. But what there are, and we'll get into it here on this next website, is these things called distilled models. So if we see here on Hugging Face's website, they, this is essentially where the DeepSeek model is hosted. This is the DeepSeek uh, company that's hosting this on here. And you can even look at the files here and see them. Uh, these are, those files aren't that big, but maybe this, oh yeah, this is the distilled model, right? So those ones aren't that big, but we'll get into the files that I'm using, which are even a little bit smaller still. Um, so this one's called DeepSeek R1 Distill Llama 8B. 
And if we go here, this kind of talks about the different deep seek models that there are. Uh, oh yeah, so it is 670 billion parameters, the full size one. But then it'll start talking about these distilled models here. And you'll see here the distilled models are fine tuned based on open source models using sample generated by DeepSeek R1. So it's essentially like using the R1 data that's what we know is good and distilling it down and kind of you lose some accuracy for sure. And that's some kind of caveat I'll mention here is is the one here, the DeepSeek that I talked to, which failed and said server's too busy. Um, that at least is the 670 billion parameter model, presumably. So you're going to get like the best possible answer. But these distill models are pretty interesting and I've been liking them. And a cool thing that goes even further than the distill model that I'm using is called the quantized distill model. And essentially quantization um, is like a way through math that I'm not going to try to explain to make it smaller, basically. Uh, and I've picked the 32-bit floating point one, which is slightly more precise and you get a little bit more precision from it. Uh, and there's some charts out there that shows the different accuracy behind all these. And it's not minor. It's not like the 670 billion parameter one is 98% accurate and this one's like 92. Like this one is maybe, I don't know, 60, 50, or even less than that, let's say. But it, as you keep getting smaller in size, it gets more realistic for a user visiting your site to be able to use this, especially if like, if, like I don't have a 670 gigabyte system. I only have eight gigabytes. So this is the most I can use and run locally. Um, Getting to my website here, my website's called DataOS. I'll, I'll show it in a second here. It's DustinBrett.com, uh, just to mention it beforehand. Uh, but DataOS, it's basically like a desktop environment experience uh, in the browser. And one of the pieces I have is an AI uh, component that we're talking about. And this is just kind of the code right here, just to kind of go over it really quick. You can visit the site and check it out. It's on GitHub. But basically, I've got the, the thing set up here. I've mentioned the distill model. I'm using the WebLLM. I've set the context window to like 131,000 tokens, which is pretty cool. That's actually a really big context window, which means you can put, like have a long conversation or give it a huge document and then ask a question. That's pretty cool, I think, but it gets slower too, the more context you have. Uh, and I'm also mixing this with another AI that's also browser-based called window.ai prompt API. Um, so that's why this file is a little bigger and it's a little bit messy. It's not, I'm not the most proud of this file from a coding point of view, uh, but it's kind of juggling web LLM and the prompt API with the ability to stream both. So it's not bad for like 300 lines and this is a web worker. So it also runs off of the main thread. Uh, this is the prompt API just as a little mention of that, something uh, cool also. This one's cool because this, you don't even need the model and the model is built into your browser and any website you go to, you could use that same model. Whereas my example, this is my website right here, dustinbrett.com. I've got a silly wallpaper for today has on the bottom right here. If you see this little icon opens up a little chat interface. And with that chat interface, you are able to say things like uh, the thing I'd said to deep seek here, which was, Hey, how's it going? So we're going to try the same thing here and I'm going to note a few things and we're going to show a few things. So I'm going to open up dev tools here. This is the, the files that had loaded with my website. I'll clear it. So you can see the new network requests that are come in just so we can see what interactions there are on initial. And you'll also be able to see in task manager here, how I have eight gigabytes of video Ram that's going to completely get used. And the GPU at some point pretty soon will go to hundred percent. So we'll say, Hey, Hey, how's it going? And another note here is that this is going to download a four and a half gigabyte file basically several files. And if you see here in the application storage, I have it built in already 4.5 gigs. So I've already downloaded it. So it's going to be faster for me. Uh, and it's already caches it and it only has to do it once, which is kind of cool, but it has to do it. And that's kind of the big caveat. And that fo those files are hosted on that hugging face website. So I'm not hosting those files. I could though. That's one cool thing is if I just download these files and take this like as a Blu-ray DVD or whatever it is, I could have the AI and like have a completely offline version of this experience if I wanted to. Uh, but that's not what we're trying to do here. So let's look at the network request. And then, yeah, we're also going to need the six gig of RAM. So let's just do it. So I'm going to send the, hey, how's it going? And it's going to start the uh, part where it figures it out. We can also look at the network requests. So the few things it's downloading is basically just the JavaScript it needs to know what the next things are that it's doing, like the web worker, let's say. And you can see the RAM increasing uh, over here on the GPU. And hopefully this won't affect my recording. That's another concern I have. I've tried with streaming sometimes where... When it's taking up 100% of the GPU and the CPU, there's not a lot of room left for video recording. Uh, but hopefully that's not the case. And you can see here it's responding. So you see how, how it's very similar to DeepSeek and I've tried to style it to have the little thinking piece. So it's doing the thinking right now here. Okay, so I need to figure out how to respond. They said, hey, how's it going? And I'm a helpful assistant and need to reply. So that's kind of cool that it's the same kind of thing. And you see here these tokens coming in 
this is just being generated from my computer now instead of asking some server in China. So you see here, if you look at like what I downloaded, it was only those few files to facilitate things. The last two I downloaded were the marked, the marked styling so that it knew how to style the text this way. And that's it. And so like if I do a follow-up question, there's nothing left to download, you'll see. Uh, so it's still thinking here. It thinks for a long time. That's one thing I've noticed with DeepSeek. It's very verbose in its thought process. But once it finishes thinking here, I've also added the ability to shrink the think box uh, if it ever stops thinking here. Um, that's another thing, too, that we're still learning with these LLMs because I want to be able to use this as an assistant and have predictable results. But you never know. Is it just going to think so long that it fills the context window? And what control do you have over it? So you end up having to build a much more complicated prompt hidden in the background where you're like telling it these limits. It's like, don't do this. Don't do that. Respond in this amount of time. And you see here, it did finally respond. It did a whole wall of thinking, which is kind of existential where you're like, hey, how's it going? And it's like, it had to think about that much just to answer. Uh, I'll leave it to people to read it if you want to pause this. I'm not going to go through it. But you see the thinking changes to thoughts. I haven't get, yet got the counting of how long that took. But then you can click thoughts and kind of shrink it. And then it just looks like a nice conversation where you're like, hey, how's it going? Hey, I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. But you can look at the thoughts and see like, oh, wow, the AI actually thought about that. Uh, and then so we can do the follow-up. Let's do the follow-up that the other DeepSeek failed with. Oh, that is cool. Where are you? So we'll paste that in here. And one more note before we do that too is if I copy this, uh, so I copy the response and I open it in uh, like one of my text editor, or oh, maybe not that file. Let me open it in this and we paste it in here. It'll give me the raw response. And you see here at the front, it actually adds these little think tags, like square or like they're HTML tags, but the, it, it basically boxes it in. So that's how I'm able to know when the LLM responds, what's the thinking piece? Is it already just knows to respond that way, which is kind of cool. Um, so let's do that follow-up question. And so we're already using all the RAM. The RAM's filled for the model, but you see this, the, the GPU has dropped as far as usage. But if we ask a new question, it won't have to reload it all into RAM. So it responds fast again, which is cool. And you'll see the CPU, the GPU just like shot back to full. You can see my CPU here at the top actually didn't move at all, basically. It's pretty much just using the graf graphics card. Uh, and it's doing its thinking again. You could look at the old message too, although the scrolling keeps pushing it down. That's a hard problem is when streaming is scrolling down, how do you let the users scroll up, but then still at some point they want it to come back and like lock in. Uh, I need to adjust that still. It's, it's not impossible to solve. Oh, that's cool. It even responded with an emoji. That's fun. Uh, so in its thinking, it had an emoji. I want to acknowledge their question positively using an emoji. Oh, so maybe it'll respond with an emoji, but that's cool. So you see it's doing secondary thoughts. And if we open up that network panel, uh, oh, oh, right. Cause I opened Monaco, a bunch of other stuff opened. Um, but you can see you're only 10 more megabytes, so it, it didn't send any other requests. If you look, every domain is my own, and I'm not running any back end, so it must have. It, it ran in the browser again. We can clear this and do one more follow-up question. Did it ever respond? Oh, that's funny. Oh, yeah, so it's just thoughts? or This happens sometimes, I found, is like it'll just literally have thoughts and then <laughs> never responds. Um, so that's a cool one. What we can do is we can start a new chat just by pressing this new button, and we can say... Uh, what was the other guy thinking? And it won't know about the previous conversation. Again, it'll be able to respond fast because the model's already loaded into the memory. Uh, and hopefully this time, oh, now we can check the network too. You see no other network calls were made. So you can see here that that's fully running on my computer. And you could just do, check this out by going to dustinbrett.com if you have a new enough version of Chrome to support this web GPU thing. And you take the 4.5 gigabyte download from Hugging Face. And there you go. And then you can just run uh, DeepSeek whenever you want which is pretty cool. And one other demo I wanted to show is like hopes that I have for it is I've built a custom prompt that I want to use in the background as like an assistant. So you could just ask my assistant on my website, like, Hey, I want to do something and it will think about it and give my, me internally a response that I can programmatically like run a program with or something. So that's something I've been wanting to do for a long time where you can almost have like an offline clippy to this OS that you can just ask anything and it'll know because it's like living in the inside itself kind of thing. Um, man, this thing's thinking for a long time. Hopefully this thing ends thinking so I can show this example prompt here. Uh, but it's funny just how much internal thought it ends up doing too. Oh, that was another thing I wanted to mention too. Maybe I can go back to the deep seek link here. Just uh, This is something interesting for people to note. If we open up the model here, they talk about how they want you to use it. And this was a few things that are kind of different from what I'm used to is they say no system prompt. So I removed the system prompt. They also tell you to keep the temperature between 0.5 and 0.7. These are slightly technical tweaks, but it's good to have these. Um, they also say like, if you're, it's good to clarify with it that you like want it to use those think boxes because sometimes it won't. 
So these are things that I'm, I'm trying to think of as you try to put it into a website or use it as code. There we go. It finally came up with an answer. So you can shrink the thoughts and then it looks like a reasonable conversation. Uh, with the thoughts, it's pretty pretty full worded. So I'll show you the prompt here really quick. And this is just kind of my thinking on it and people can tell me what they think. So this prompt like this is like, this is what I would try to give it. It's like, initiate your response with the think piece, like it told me to say, and then be like, act like an intelligent in OS, uh, analyze the user's response, understand its intent. Here's the programs. This would be dynamic. I would just like load that on the fly if there were new programs. And I could even be like, here are the files. This is where it would help to be have a bigger context window because I could start every AI conversation with like, here is every single thing going on and just like do a dump of the state of the OS. And then based on all of that, answer this user's question. So that's what this prompt is here. And then, so there's an example. And then at the end of it here, what I'll put is, so we put all those things, we list all the things it can do, and then I'll say, now at the bottom here, now respond to the user's message, and I'll, this will be the user's message that you would hidden in the background. I'll put, let's play a video game. So we send that big thing, and you imagine in the background it's having to think. And the bigger the user question too, the more it's like, takes time, I think, to think. Also, it's because the context window increases. Um, so you can see here, though, it starts pretty fast. So if we were to imagine this was happening in the background, and the user just was like, hey, I want to play a game. I could just have like the Clippy assistant being like, hmm, or something and like a little thinking bubble. Uh, or I could even show these thoughts, which would be kind of cool too. Uh, and another thing too is like, let's imagine 10, 20 years from now, if I'm still working on this, this will obviously be a lot faster. At some point this will work because it already feels like this could work, but it's very slow. Uh, and like just the idea of even like giving it an answer and feeding it back and doing some back and forth, that could take... 10 minutes, 20 minutes, I don't even know if you even have the system resources for it. But in 20 years, I feel like that'll be trivial with what we have now. And then, and I feel like what we have now is already enough minus like the system resource issue. So I think it'll be pretty cool. And you see here it answered. So this would be something I could programmatically grab the word like launch. So it decided Classy Cube, which is like a Minecraft game. And so that's what it decided when I put like, let's play a game. So that'd be kind of cool. So if I had that programmatically, I could have just said, let's play a game. And then it could have automatically started the, the game, you know, which would have been cool. Um, but that's basically it. I don't know if I have anything else to demo. So um, yeah, thanks for checking out this video. And if you like it, please throw me a like. And if you like this kind of content and want to motivate me, uh, then please subscribe. So thanks and see you in the next one.